Control calling 047. Control Central to 047. Hello, 047. You have 180 seconds to countdown. Repeat, countdown at 180. Give us a reading, please, Colonel. Come in, 047. 047 to Central. This is Earhart. Our flight time to the platform will be five, six minutes. Arrival at 1456 U.S. Mountain Standard. Please note, radar and ejection system are calibrated to begin transmitting at exactly 45 minutes. Repeat. The computer will receive our signal at four, five minutes. Please set up to relay course correction immediately. Navigator ready now. Stand by. You'll pick up, AZ. No, one second, Chief. Okay. Radford to Central. Our trajectory will be minimum for the distance. Burnout at 4 minutes, 52 seconds. Altitude, 63 miles. Peak velocity, 18,500. Over. Hope they've programmed checked that brain since our last That's time. That's good. That's good for now, Ace. Besides, manual correction is no problem. Keeps the navigator on his toes. How goes it back there, Mr. Observer? Good, sir. Screen's on fine tuning since minus 10. Camera's on range finder from zero to 1075 miles. Is there anything else, Colonel? Fasten the brace, lie back in your harness, and relax from the toes, as your instructor would say. No, seriously, how do you feel, Lieutenant? Strong as a bull, sir. Do you think that I... I think you'll do very well indeed. The first time is not necessarily the hardest, believe me. In fact, uh... All right, get set, both of you. Here comes the count. Five seconds to count down. Stay loose, Lieutenant, but don't let your eyes wander from those instruments. Right, sir. 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, Fuel now, 25, Chief. 24, Generator going. 23, 22... 21, Slow down on your 20, intake 19, and watch those pumps. 18, 17, Pressure normal. 16, Chamber 15, approaching full. 14, 13, 12, 11. Safety off. Ignition on. The flight's starting to turn. Relax and inhale. Igniting and count zero. Two, one, zero. Four seven to central. O four seven to central. Vertical at plus one zero. Starting to spin at plus one four. Veering at seventeen one seven. Your baby over and out. Last stage burnout complete at 4.55, Chief. <sighs> Stabilizer's normal. That three seconds is a gift. Mm. And stop worrying. Old Faithful got it solved before we even signed off. Oh, which reminds me. You still with us, Lieutenant? I think so. <laughs> I'll know better when I, when I get this elephant off my chest. <laughs> Those stars you're seeing, they're not for real. Not yet, that is. We're approaching twilight at better than 18,000 MPH. Your lungs will begin to acclimate very soon, like an athlete learning to run the mile or swim long distances. Speaking of which, take a look at your screen now, Lieutenant. Wow, the Earth is dropping away like crazy and it's turning. Correction, the rotation is our own doing. Clockwise around the longitudinal axis from plus 14. As I was saying, Lieutenant, can you make out any familiar landmarks on the surface? It's hard to tell for the clouds, sir, but... Oh, wait a minute. I see a town sitting on the edge of a lake. At least I think it's a lake. From our position, I'd say that town you see is Los Angeles. Yonder lake is the Pacific Ocean. Wow. <laughs> All right, now get set for another surprise. Something you can tell the folks at home about. I'm talking about free fall, Lieutenant. Well, we've simulated it, sir, in training, but to actually leave the Earth's gravitational field... is an impossibility, Lieutenant. Between the Earth's influence and that of the moon, for example, one may theoretically arrive at a neutral point. However... I understand, sir. It's a matter of terminology. Right. Mm -hmm. 
In effect, we enter free fall when the rocket motors stop. But don't unbuckle till I tell you. Ace, you take the first step. Show our observer how it's done. Go on. Think you can follow that, Lieutenant? Holy cow! I mean, that's quite a sight. Standing head down. Come join the fun, but only watch out for that king post. Breaks and sprains come very easy when you're weightless, you know. Okay. Off with the harness. Now, with one hand, press up slowly. Don't shove, but press away with the tips of your fingers gradually. That's right. Don't be afraid. Wow. Hey, this is incredible. It's just like... Like drifting underwater. It's the funniest sensation I've ever felt. It's, it's kind of hard to breathe. I, Colonel, I, I'm blanking out. Easy, you're still winded from the acceleration. Here. There, gotcha. Now take this dram, hold on to the bulkhead. You have plenty of time to practice aboard the spaceship. Now, now how do you feel? Better? Okay, sir. I'm sorry I panicked. The cabin was starting to spin. You didn't panic. You reacted. We'll see that you pull in the right direction next time. All right. Back into the suspenders. Our correction shot is due in 30 seconds. Will this be like the first lift, Colonel? I mean, so many graves all at once? No. Just enough to parallel our approach with that of the platform. Open your screen so we can pick her up. Save the tuning until we're within 10 miles. Got it? Right, sir. Engine and compass controls on receiving, Chief. I'm keeping the manual open. Good. We should be sighting at any moment once the boost is... Object at 110 degrees, Colonel, and approaching fast. All right, hold on. Here we go. Stay in your straps until I give the order. Next stop, the space platform. such extensive rocket repairs and refueling are handled right here on the space station. This airlock is a regular service hangar, besides housing a full-scale observatory, transmitter, hydroponics plant. What about spaceships, sir, where atomics are involved? Reactors are tended through servo mechanisms at a distance of several miles from here. Men have to re-enter the station through a decontamination area. Highest paying job in the service. Will we be wearing suits out to the ship, Colonel? No. Through that door is a shuttle rocket which offers all the protection we'll need. Come on, it's time to board. There'll be suits aboard the ship, Lieutenant, but only for landing and emergencies en route. You mean, sir, we're, we're going across in that? Well, there's hardly room enough. More than enough, Lieutenant. Besides, the trip will be brief. Men will soon be crossing in high-altitude suits and breathing gear. Portable jets are in the design stage for holding directionally or attaching, like in the old comic strips. Me first, you follow. Now close and bolt the safety. It's part of the ignition circuit. No power unless you're really slammed to. Thanks for the tour of the space station, sir. Well, I'll never forget this first flight as long as I live. Ready, Lieutenant? All you have to do is thrust, watch your stabilizers, and begin braking when I tell you. Settings are manual, and you're the driver. Pardon, sir? That's why I boarded first. You're behind the controls, so take her away. But, Colonel, our training was only simulated. All the more reason not to delay. First-hand experience, son. Opportunity is knocking. Right on this Mercury switch. Colonel! Good work, Lieutenant. Just follow what I say. And while there's time, look behind you. Wow. What a view. Virtually an island of civilization in space. Man's whistle stop to the stars, eh? Imagine what it's taken to conceive that station. The years of effort. Balancing men and supplies in orbit. The heartbreaks. The 
And now this crown of glory, circling 1,075 miles above the Earth. It's ugly but efficient and more comfortable than you can possibly imagine. At least for the 120 hours we'll be aboard. Those fuel tanks in the rigging, sir, if they could be discarded along the way. Indeed, they are. As soon as each has been individually exhausted. If you're wondering whether this will reduce our flight time, the answer is no. The fuel output for anything over minimum escape velocity will rise astronomically. <laughs> Excuse the pun. <laughs> It'll take practically all the propellant we have there to reach seven miles per second, decelerate, and land. And while we're about it, set your forward burners on low. Better start braking now. Sir! Sir, I can't get any power forward. There's no response. Hold everything. Stabilizers, quick! Pull up on X, plus 20 on your Y coordinate. Plus 20 it is, sir. Now, full thrust on rear engine control. But, sir, we'll plow right into that ship. Brace yourself, hold on. Abby, up. Our navigator has saved us from an otherwise slow and tedious rescue operation. Look there, Lieutenant, below. You see that line feeding out of the ship? That's a magnetic grapple, and we're on the receiving end. We're slowing down already. I don't understand, sir. If Ace is aboard the spaceship, how did he know? Good question. I'm not sure myself. One thing's certain, he knew before we did what would happen. You can thank our stars for that. Woo! Feel that difference? We're getting real backward now. What I can't figure is the time required to plot target, aim, and fire an emergency unit like that. Well, we'll know soon enough. Oh, wow. Am I glad that's over with. Strap safe to open up now, sir? Hold it. Yes. Yeah. The pressure reading outside your door area is 14 pounds normal. The bumpers are holding okay. They'll set foot directly into the airlock, close and equalize again, then shake hands with our lifeguard. What in blue blazes are you guys up to? Rehearsing for a circus or something? Such a hair-breath, hair-brain maneuver I never... Just a minute, friend. You don't think I planned it that way? And just how did you uncover our problem so fast, anyway? You didn't know that tug was being worked on? Oh, no, obviously not. Well, the forward lines were shot, Chief, and had to be replaced. Only the service guy got called away before he had a chance. The leads were disconnected, and when you took off... The space I... station radioed ahead, and you peeled off the grapple, I mm -hmm, see. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. That was a beautiful job of harpooning you did, Ace. The lieutenant and I thank you. Especially me. <laughs> now I know how Moby Dick must have felt. Yes. Well, at least this is one sea story with a happy ending, though. You better notify them that we're taking off right away, Ace. And that we'll leave the equipment in orbit for salvage at their convenience. Right, Chief. We won't be much trouble with acceleration on this run, Lieutenant. One grab will be ample until we reach escape velocity. And then free fall until we pass neutral between Earth and the Moon. The turnover will be gradual. Our gyros are triggered by the computer. We'll get buzz from Control Central in advance. Here's our pilot's room, Lieutenant. You see, it's all done with instruments. Nothing in the flight pattern can be left to chance anymore since these runs became commercialized. Our cargo includes precision mining equipment from Mars, and the lunar base. And we can't afford to jeopardize it by even the slightest error. All set, Ace? Right. Lieutenant? Yes, sir. 
Take your positions for the pull out of orbit. Sir? Hmm? Is that all there is to it? I mean, I never realized space travel was so... Cut and dry? No, son. That isn't all there is. I played down the operational side of it deliberately to point up something else. Ready? Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. Now consider this as part of your training too, Lieutenant, and watch carefully. Up till now, our viewport has been polarized against the glare of the Earth's atmosphere. Since we left the orbit of the satellite, it's become completely opaque. I'm now going to depolarize this field across our range of vision. Colonel, the sky. The whole sky is covered with dazzling diamonds of light. I never realized. No one fully realized, son, until man set foot upon the frontier of space. Instead of dust and distortion, the stars up here shine through a clean, near-perfect vacuum. Look there. The Milky Way, the bright belt of our galaxy, Lieutenant. Our own island of stars among a universe of islands, all shapes and sizes, where the mysterious drama of creation goes on and on, and the endless birth and death of the stars. Decompression 40%, increase steady. Only a few minutes to go. Everybody hear me all right? Reception's okay, but keep it gradual, Ace. How are you holding up, Lieutenant? Very good, sir. The only thing is, it's getting a little hard to move my arm. Your mobility at the decompression limit will be about the same as during training, all things being equal except gravity. Since your cleats are magnetized, you won't be able to appreciate the difference until we hit ground. The moment you've been waiting for, isn't it, son? Sure is. And, sir, could I be the first? No. You better follow after me. I want an observer who's all in one piece. They're well protected against normal hazards, but not so well against the precipitous kind. Skip was right, Lieutenant. By the way, if you didn't know, how much did you guess all that equipment weighs? Suit, helmet, tools, mixture tank, etc. Oh, about... 25 pounds, but I know it's much more. That's right. The complete outfit runs over 150. You're going to be in for a surprise when we get away from these metal bulkheads. Which is precisely why I want to be ready and waiting when he steps off that ladder. Room empty, Chief. to you, the moon. All right. Slowly does it. After me. AC, you bring up the rear. Right. Yeah, we're getting off now. Okay, sir. No! Hold it. See what I mean? <sighs> oh. Well, this is going to be awkward until I get back the other five-sixths of me. The suit only makes it more so. If only it were somehow weighted with extra... Impossible, Lieutenant. The extra transport for three men would amount to over a ton. Oh, you'll develop your moon legs quickly enough, and plenty of time to start considering the problem of getting used to Earth gravity again. Now, as a veteran of one minute, what do you think of this barren place? see why they call it Operation Nightmare. Nothing but desert, rock, and fantastic shadows. A real chamber of horrors, isn't it? Frozen by night and blasted by boiling heat during the daytime. There's practically no atmosphere, Lieutenant. And this is a vitally important point. It means that the surfaces of all this rock you see have never been eroded by wind or water. 
Every foot of those jagged edges is razor sharp, ready to tear and puncture the life mixture out of your suit at the first moment of carelessness. So take it easy. Try to resist the temptation to play around with this low gravity. I promise. Just the same, I can't help wondering how far a home run would go. Convoy to the north, Chief. Heading this way. They must have been loaded and waiting when they received our position. Looks like Leonard from those numerals up front. It is. The BG himself, Ace. Can you read me, General? This is Earhart, 047. How's Autolycus these days? Over. Hello, Frank. The days are fine. The night's our trade for the black hole of Calcutta. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Same here. General, you know Ensign Bradford? Right. How have you been, Ace? Fine indeed, sir. And this is our flight observer, Lieutenant Randall. General Leonard of the lunar base at Autolycus. How do you do, sir? Good to have you aboard, Lieutenant. Your first run to the moon? Yes, General. First assignment outside the academy. Good. Now, wait a minute. I think we may have an unexpected bit of excitement for you. Frank, the smaller pieces of your cargo are for the Hoyle Observatory. They're fairly light. Your, your observer and I could deliver them while my men unload the rest out of the convoy. The opportunities are rare for this sort of thing, and it'd be highly instructive. What do you say? Wonderful. I don't think the lieutenant will have any objections. Objections? Why, Colonel, I, I mean, well, that would be fine with me, sir. Very good, Lieutenant. Come along. Frank, if you'll direct the men, I'll bring around the lead carrier and we can get started. We should just about complete the trip south in time to return the main load to the base. In you go, son. Good luck and follow what the general has to say. I will, sir, and thank you for permitting me to... Nonsense. He's delighted to parcel you out. See you later. How far is it to the observatory, sir? Mm, about 70 miles south into the Apennines. There's really nothing else to compare with it. Brand new 300-inch reflectoscope, photo labs, planetarium, the works. Finest observatory in the solar system. Wait, uh, uh, look there. Here you can see the, the peaks rising ahead of us and to the left. Hmm? Oh, we must be traveling awfully fast for them to show up so suddenly. Well, that's part of it. The main reason lies actually in the moon's smallness. With a diameter only a little more than one quarter that of the Earth, your, your horizon's very close here. Objects in the distance appear and disappear much more abruptly. Hey, look around, you'll see that your rocket's almost dropped over the rim. See, that's right. Something else, too, sir. What is that powdery stuff scattered over the ground to our right? It looks like salt from here. That's moon dust, Lieutenant. Oh? A fine, powdery sand composed of meteorite particles and native rock. In deeper basins where the dust has accumulated, it can be very treacherous. We once lost a carrier that way before the road system was marked out. Even with these balloon tires? Roller guards, Lieutenant. Yes, even these are scant protection against the larger drifts. Also, the steering is difficult to correct in a hurry. Such a large wheelbase. Uh, hold on. That's a signal from the observatory. Sir, I can see it up above, about 30 degrees left. It must be 10,000 feet. Wait, wait, it... wait. Something about a slide obliterating our left turn into the gorge at... Quick, Lieutenant. Four-wheel drive. Hold on to the side. We've missed the turn. The dust. We're plowing in. Right. Uh, start working into reverse while I swing up top. Can I help, sir? Yes, there we are. Keep that turbine going. There's fuel in these outside tanks, hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to start releasing it to lighten up. Sir, the four wheels are slipping. All right. Now, ram into reverse. Hard you can. Reverse it is. Don't let up on that drive. Faster. I don't think it's working, General. We're moving in deeper. This isn't a snowbank. Use brute force on that pedal. It's the only way. Starting to pull out. Slowly. Keep it down. Right. I can feel it pulling out now. Almost completely submerged here. Good work, Lieutenant. We're making the grade. I can see the markers behind us. Just a few more yards. We're on to bedrock. Hold on, sir. Pulling very well now. I'm, I'm going over to the other seat. Hold 
the wheel. You're doing fine. Made it! Hey, you're practically on the road. That's good. That's good. Let her cool for a moment. Oh. I'm shaking all over, General. That's the closest I ever came. You're not the only one, Lieutenant. Well, you deserve a recommendation for this. First, however, on to the observatory. We've got a cargo to deliver. Looks awfully red down there, sir. Is Mars completely a desert in this sector? No, you'll see the first signs of vegetation in a few moments. We're heading toward the equator, so there, to the west. See those patches of green? Yeah, I'm curious to know, Commander Clifford. Is any of that stuff edible? No, Colonel, at least not in its raw state. With the arrival of the equipment you brought, we'll begin testing various preparations of plant life. I do hope we succeed in making it edible, and soon the rations up here are getting pretty monotonous. Well, what about animal life, sir? I mean, is there really such a thing as a, a Martian? Uh, well, we don't actually know, Lieutenant. The base has been operated for only a short time, and to date no animal form has been observed. Once the installation work is finished, and the men can return to being scientists instead of plumbers and carpenters, we'll attack the problem with some systematic exploration. How great do you think are the chances of discovering intelligent life? Life in general is quite possible. Of the intelligent part, I can't really say. But even with a scarcity of oxygen, there is enough in the atmosphere to make it tenable. Colonel, will we have time to explore any before returning to the ship? Uh, afraid not this trip. Conditions are too unsettled. And we should help the men all we can with unloading and everything. Oh, leave that to us, Colonel. Besides... You should devote some time to exercise after eight and a half months in space. Walking around will accustom you to the gravity and allow you to see something of our landscape. Thank you, sir. That's great. Is the base near those mountains over there? Where's that? Uh-oh, bad luck. There goes my Chamber of Commerce speech. Better pass the name quickly. What is it, Commander? The sandstorm, I'm afraid, which can be treacherous on Mars. What the lieutenant observed off to the side here is a solid wall of red sand. The low gravity will raise one of these several miles into the atmosphere. I'm sending a radar. Sir, wouldn't it be possible to fly over? Possible, yes. But our fuel limitation makes it imperative that I drive for the base. The remaining distance isn't great, but it's catching up to us in a big hurry. Well, what can we do to help, Commander? Nothing, really. The tram will help, though. Here, swallow a couple of these, both of you. And hang on. Here she comes. The instruments are all crazy. How close are we getting to the ground? Hard to tell. We're getting buffeted in all directions. Our stabilizers are holding. We should be making headway. What was that? Now the cargo is starting to shift. We didn't exactly prepare for this, but it should hold. Millions of miles with this gear, and here we stand to lose it in the last 50. That won't be all we'll lose if it goes. Look ahead. It's getting lighter. I can see part of the sky. We can be thankful it isn't the other direction. Not too soon. There went the first of the retaining wires. <sighs> Most of the storm is behind us now, and we are too far off base. Keep your harness fastened while I set for landing. Nice work, Commander, on your flying and your colony. So this is Mars City. Right. <laughs> the units in back are living quarters. And the dome on the left is our day room. And that big bubble on the right is where we've just started building the labs. <sighs> Breathing cowls up over your heads here. Put them on and we'll walk over. Easy stepping out now. You're gonna feel mighty heavy at first. Those magnetics in space are murder on the arteries. But this is worse. Boy, you weren't kidding. Oh, 
A 20-mile hike is duck soup by comparison. Now, rest here for a moment. I'll bring your things inside. Aren't you coming with us, sir? No, you won't have any difficulty. I'd like to accompany you, except that I have to supervise selection of the return cargo. They're only sample ores and plant specimens, but I feel that Earth must see only our best examples if we're to continue receiving subsidies. Here's the skiff, complete with supplies of oxygen, mix, and fuel. You can't get lost. Just watch out for Martian mermaids. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. Maybe we'll come back with a live one. Check your leads and valves, Lieutenant. They're not exactly watertight, but we'll be running on low speed, and I don't think there'll be any problem in that department. day on Earth, sir. The temptation to remove this gear and try to breathe without it. If you're not flat in 10 seconds, this air is equivalent to Earth's atmosphere at about 11 miles elevation, more than twice the height of Mount Everest. Otherwise, it's delightful. Hey, look here. Somebody's included a pair of old-fashioned paddles. Handy in case the turbine conks up. The vegetation seems to be increasing along here, Colonel. And, uh, sir... Sir, what's that in the sky over your shoulder? A flying saucer? No, that's Deimos. One of the two Martian moons. If you look toward the horizon, you'll see Phobos, the larger of the two. It rises and sets four times a day, Deimos only once. But we're missing a lesson right here, Lieutenant. Notice this tree-like plant on our left? Now, the Martian year is 687 Earth days long, which means this tree has Colonel. to... Colonel, excuse me, but on the other bank. Where? What did you see? It's gone now. That clearing directly opposite. Something ran across and into the bush. Hey, quickly, sir. Can we take a closer look? Right. But are you certain? Well, what did it look like? It was like a bird of some kind. Be careful, Lieutenant. Watch your leads in that undergrowth. Colonel, come here, quickly. I found it. It's an oversized bird, but covered with a scaly coat. What a find, Lieutenant. If this creature is half as important as science... Listen to him respond, sir. It's almost as though he understands. Broad feet. Tipped beak for grubbing food, but gentle enough. Let's get him back to the base before... Kill! Colonel, good grief! What? It's a gigantic bird at the same time! Run, Colonel! Run, it's coming this way! I've got the little one! Into the skiff! Into the skiff! I've got to stand it off! This paddle will do. Man, it's coming on like an express train. It... Got it! What? Monster! Once more now! No! Man! Tough bird that would be for Thanksgiving dinner. Colonel, you're injured. Here, let me help you into the skin. Nothing serious. No, I caught this as it went down. Just a scratch, that's all. I think we'd better shove off before Mama wakes up and starts looking around. How's Junior taking it? He looks scared. He looks like I feel, sir. I've never seen anything so big move so fast. One of the virtues of this low gravity. It almost finished us. <laughs> That's much better, little one. Man, are the biologists going to have a field day with you? Lieutenant, this is the trophy of your first trip into space. The most dramatic and one of the most important discoveries this planet could possibly offer. Other life will be found in the universe. However, the inspiration of this small creature will carry man to search and probe beyond this frontier to the furthest reaches of his imagination. <laughs>